Hi guys, it's Heather from HMP Artistry here. I want to show you guys how I made these really cool calming circle bath bombs and sculpted the toes and the little rat tails that I put on top. There were some issues with the audio and recording for some parts, so it's a little jumpy, so I wanted to apologize up front for that. But I wanted to show you guys how I made them because these are going into our very first My Mood bath boxes starting in October. So I hope you really enjoy it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on all our social media. Here we go. Hey guys, it's Heather here and I am making dead men's toes today. I just sprayed alcohol all over my hands. They're already washed and that I touched the camera to hit play so I'm alcoholing my hands. Um, it's easier to not wear gloves when I'm doing this but to sanitize because there's a lot of detail that goes into the little dead men's toes. And these are going to go in let me get my cauldron so I can show you in my little cauldron bath bombs. But I thought I'd just show you guys how I make them. The first thing you do, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, is get your soap dough and mush it. And forgive my fingernails, I've got colorant underneath them. I was adjusting and redoing some colorant and it stained my fingernails. Life of a soap maker. So you take your soap dough, roll it out, test it, it's a little big. Roll it out. And I'm pressing it kind of flat and angling it so that it's sort of the shape relatively of a toe. Trying to keep it at a good level here. Now and start shaping it like that. This is also how you can make alien heads. That then you put the eyes and the little dots for the nose and you would have an alien head and I'll wrap up my soap dough so that it doesn't get too hard I'm gonna clean my hands off one more time have a paper towel here to get the uh, excess soap off okay now I have one of these little guys here that I use to start my shaping. Actually, I'm going to start with this guy because he's bigger. There we go. And now we're going to start shaping that toenail. And it's up to you how curved you want it, how deep you want, ooh, how deep you want your line to be. And then kind of bring it in. Bring it in. Just kind of like your toenail would be. Doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to kind of work with the lines or within the lines. Just like so and you can use your finger for this but I have my little handy dandy tool here and I'm just gonna kind of press in the nail bed a bit just to sort of give it some indention and some shape And that's why we're working within those lines. And then I've got another little tool. Looks like that. And it's going to kind of shape those edges and I can pull it up to 
kind of give it that positioning and then press down so that it looks like skin. I want to kind of rough up the edges of the nail. And then that's where this comes in. And I kind of flatten it and pull a bit to kind of give it a little texture. I can do the same thing up here by just kind of putting something behind that nail and pulling. And that way you've got sort of a sort of a jagged edge to that nail. And then next up are the little wrinkles. We can kind of do our little indentions here so that it looks like little toe wrinkles. I'm going to define my edges just that little bit more. Just like that. And then I'm going to take my little ball tool and roll it around to kind of form the toe socket. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I've got a couple of different tools that I can use, but the key is just to get a little indention there. And I'm gonna have to do this. Okay, then once you have your indention, You'll lay your toe down and you'll kind of pull away from that indention because then that makes those edges look jagged and a little bit more like skin. And if you guys want like an in-depth detailed version, you can Google fondant toes and find tons of detailed um, kind of sculpting tutorials so that you can see. I want it to zoom for you guys like that. And then I have a little bit of umber brown mica in alcohol. And I use it to kind of dirty up and age up the toenails so that you can really see that that's what's happening. I want to zoom in so that you guys can see. There we go. And then you just sort of paint that toenail. You can kind of give those ridges in the toes a little more. You can even give a little color to the inside so that it just looks old and dirty because these are dead men's toes. So I want them to be a little grungy and a little creepy. These are the dead men's toes or zombie toes.
Okay, guys, I am back to fill the um, little cauldrons with my bath bomb mixture. I have fragranced it with a burgundy rose and blood orange fragrance. It smells really nice. Take an empty cauldron. Make sure it's nice and zeroed out. And I am just pouring my mixture using my hands into the cauldron. I don't want it to be too tightly packed because you want it to really foam well. But you don't want it to be too light either. So it's one of those kind of balancing acts. Five. Put just a little bit more right on top so that it looks like it's bubbling. I've got four ounces of bath bomb mixture in the container and then I'm going to put my dead man's toe in there and kind of press it down to get it nice and set and then my little rat tail to hang off the side and then I'm going to press it and shape it to make sure that everything is in there nice and neat. I think I want to move the toe. It doesn't look as good as I wanted it to. There we go. And then there we have it. And we'll do our next one. Okay guys, I am back to paint the tops of my bath bombs. Okay, I am splashing it on the top so that it looks like bubbles. Make sure that I splatter it really, really well over each and every one. Because when the pigment dies, it's just going to be a similar color of green to the tops. And the edges so that that pigment will show up on those edges as well. And I will come back later this evening so that you can see what the pigment looks like when it's glowing. Mm -hmm. 